All right, welcome to THL the Friday Night Fights. I'm your op, Saku, again. And here is Dankus Dad. Dankus back Dad. For week. He, he, he liked it so much, he came back, and it's going to be a mainstay once Gordon uh, will be back as well. You'll, you'll hear those two beautiful voices. How was your week so far this week? Well, week has been good, but I don't know if it was as good as these Hearthstone matches we're going to get tonight. <laughs> we got some exciting games on the slate, Slaku. I know. It's it's uh it's not often we get uh I should say it is pretty often we do get some high caliber talent, but uh, tonight seems to be uh, we got Wild Nine uh, representing Defias in the Legacy Series for Gold Conference, um, the champions of last season, um, and he's going up against. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Uh, what's it called? Uh, I can't remember what that that award's called. Neji now. Boston. Neji Boston. Yeah, but there's a he's a, he's he's won a uh, the triple crown pretty much in in like the overall uh, series winner for the last uh, few seasons. Not in a well, it wasn't a row, but just not lately. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. keep rambling here. But he's an excellent player. So we got uh, two of those guys are up next, and then we have. Um, Partners in Crime, uh, we have the content director, Don Day, from Mr. Smite Side in the Pro Division uh, Black Conference, going up against his his uh, legacy captain and teammate, uh, uh, Robobson, who's from the UK, and he's representing F2L tonight. So, should be some exciting news. Um, the patch, the patch. Talk about the patch briefly. Yeah, it's uh, really brought a change to ladder. I know uh, I've still had some good experiences with Thief Rogue. I think that the deck is still powerful, but really now it seems like uh, Hyper Aggro and Control are wrestling right now for for control of the meta. And, you know, it's hard to say who's going to win. Like, I think at the top, the aggro decks are performing best, but Control has the high play rates. And, you know, we're seeing a few uh, Dark Horses pop up. It's uh, it's it's really it really has changed even even a little bit <laughs> there was a i haven't had a chance to even play ladder this week just because my work week was pretty busy but um we were talking briefly and, and you mentioned that uh the, the there's been some great changes so so um yeah what uh what do we have first we have niji boston's uh Demon Hunter, Shaman, Warlock, and Warrior going up against Wild Nines, Demon Hunter, Hunter, Shaman, and Warlock. Um, any any predictions on a ban? I'm just trying to get the uh, the player started here. So, so mm, I think it's a little difficult to say. So Warrior is one of those new Dark Horse decks that's been popping up on the ladder. And, well, personally, I'm not convinced in the power of the deck. It might be able to do some work here. Neji's got some really solid matchups with the Warrior into Demon Hunter and Hunter, but Shaman and Warlock will be challenging. That being said, Demon Hunter cues very well into those classes. So it's a, it's difficult to say. I think it's possible that hmm, I think it's possible that Neji could ban the Demon Hunter, but it really could be wide open. I, just in the legacy format, we don't know what thirty cards everyone has in each of their decks, so that's right. Tough to know the plan. What do you think about Wild Nines ban? Uh, Wild Nines ban, gosh. I, <laughs> since I haven't played enough on on ladder in ladder and in this season at all, it, I'm going to say he bans Demon Hunter as well. Mm. Um, but that warrior's looking kind of. Kind of sketchy as well. <laughs> if you're expecting control and you see control on, on ladder quite a bit, that that could be a a hiccup. But we'll see. Yes. Yeah, I think Demon Hunter is a good call there. So we'll see if uh, that's what ends up happening. So we got so Nechi has banned Wild Nine's Warlock. Mm-hmm. And Wild Nine has banned which which one? You get you get a twenty five percent chance to get right. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with your prediction. I think he's gonna ban the Demon Hunter. Okay, it's uh it's actually double Warlock ban. Double Warlock ban. Oh boy, 
I think uh, this means we might see a little, something a little bit uh, non-traditional in that Demon Hunter slot from Neji, but yeah. we'll just have to see. So what are what are your experience of seeing uh, the Demon Hunter build? Has it changed much on ladder that you've encountered? I um, think the I think that Magtheridon is the piece of tech that's getting flouted the most for the Fell Demon Hunter, which is the most common build. I know that that's really helpful against Ramp Druid and other decks that can build threats that are a little bit too tall for Immolation Aura and Fell Screen Blast to clear off. And looking at that ban choice, I don't expect to see it here. All right. Typing some comments to get the guys to get started. So um, let's have fun. And... What you're going to see, uh, our viewers are going to see on the screen right now, is you're going to see Wild Nine's going to be at the bottom of the screen. First to spectate for the casters. That's us. That's that's me. That's that's Tank is dead. And they're going to have an empty bot Boston at the top of your screen. I, I'm I'm kind of liking the uh, the way the friends list is uh, now populated with um, battlegrounds <laughs> icons as well. That's that's proving interesting. Yeah, it's the one rating I can feel proud of right now. I've been testing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and Battleground Buddies, that uh, with that coming through too, it's uh, I, I've played one one game of Battlegrounds. That was today. <laughs> but when I when I logged in and saw, saw all the purple icons, I was like, oh, cool, sweet. Yeah, right. I think it's neat. Let's see. Waiting for. Some eyeballs to pop up. Um, what do you think the, the players are going to start with first? Mm. I think, once again, it's a difficult call, but if Warlocks are out, then I feel like... I feel like Neji is probably... I feel, I'm expecting the Demon Hunter from Neji Boston, and mm -hmm. from Wild Nine, I think, uh, I think I'm think i going to bet Demon Hunter versus Shaman. Okay. I'm really hard to say, but I feel like that's as good a guess as any. What do you think, Saku? I, I'm going to go with Neji's going to open with Demon Hunter for sure. Um, and for some reason, I got a, a inkling that it's going to be a Hunter for Wild Nine. Whether that's a good walk in, walk into a Demon Hunter kind of deal, I'm, I'm not sure. We'll we'll see in a second. Oh, it looks like we're getting started. And uh... ah, I am forged from the fires of the earth. We got my elements are We got a double shaman. And Neji Boston, does he have his... Oh, I just messaged him. There we go. There we go. Great. Neji All right, well, we get the Quest Shaman Mirror. And uh, so far, it seems like both hands are not ideal. A little bit. Seems like we're... Oh, but Wild Nine breaks it right open there. That multicaster is huge. In this matchup, it's all about getting your Brucon of the Elements down first and uh, completing your quest. And I think that with the multicaster, Wild Nine is poised to do so right now. Hmm. Interesting discover. Two options that are good for longevity and one that's good for immediate tempo. Trying to mess around with some of the cams tonight, so if uh, any of the viewers enjoy a clearer image, hopefully it's coming through a little bit better than, than it was the last couple weeks. A little grainy. Last time. Oh. Oh. What? Another tough choice for Energy Boston here. And keep taking these Lady Vashes, or maybe opt for instead the Phoenix or Steward. And... Looks like it's going to be steward. Oh. One thing to keep an eye on now is that uh, Wild Nine, while he does have the multicaster, he only has nature spells in his hand right now. So he can only set up a single draw for next turn unless he commits an early instructor Fireheart, which in this matchup can get rid of one of your best ways to push a lethal later in the game. 
How do you think he's going to break out of this situation here? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's definitely going to be challenging. It doesn't have much. Uh, well, it's got ramp, a little bit of ramp. There you go. Multicaster to get one card. Mm. That seems Tough. a little lackluster. Yep. Oh. oh, and there's the multicaster for Neji. And uh, Neji Boston has already. Been able, has already now played spells of two schools, so his multicaster is gassed up to get an extra card. Yeah. I think here it's probably a cycle of overdraft and maybe develop the Lady Vash. Nenji hasn't see. hit any of the uh, overdraft either yet. No, he has not. But it looks like he's going to coin here. Oh, there's the st We're going to see the Steward of Scrolls. It seems like. And oof. Tidal Wave. Molten Blast. And what? I think Molten Blast is the pick here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's to get the fire spell. I was almost thinking if the Wind Fury, but that's in this matchup here. That's not really a ideal card. <laughs> no. No. But. The guidance here. <laughs> These tidal waves. I know, right? Might, might see a comeback late in the game on the back of that card. Yeah. I'm guessing here Wild Nine is just going to Yeah. Yep, go with the rock get, nope. nope. Use the totem, get on the board. And taunt totem is a good roll. Yep. yep second multicaster mm -hmm. for Neji Boston. Let's get I all think, of them. Yeah. I think here we'll probably see Molten Blast onto the uh, onto the Novice Zapper after this, so that uh, Multicaster here is set to draw three cards next turn. And the second Guidance from Wild Nine. Rip that, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. And ooh, Lightning Revolve. Storm. Yeah, Revolve. And, yeah, yeah it's, both are good cards. So. Especially. If, uh, well, I think here it's worth considering just tempoing out the lightning storm to put up, put down a three two or a three three. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, I would agree with that. Trade totem revolve is also an option, but I think we're probably going to see the storm. Wild Nine thinking over his options. Yes. Um, I think there he's counting toward his Brucon to see how many more overload right. cards generate. Does he bring? Okay. So heal's pretty, pretty good at this point. Yep. Yeah. I think yep. Lightning oh. Bolt here. That makes sense. He puts the three three body on the board and the healing totem. Uh, yep. Plays around Perpetual Flame. Up and there's Canal Slogger. Uh, timely draw. Yes. Neji and his top decks are legendary. Right, Tank is dead? Oh, yes. I've been <laughs> on the other side of it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, for those of you at home, both of these players have uh, taken wins off of me in the last two <laughs> weeks. So I get to learn how to play Legacy from this seat this time. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Oh, interesting. I've heard of it. Multicaster here. Bringing out three cards. Yep. What's Neji's hand like? He's at nine. Okay, so he's he's fine. Oh, yeah. I think it was an interesting consideration to think about playing the Canal Slugger there. Mm. But you take for Lady now. Vash in this one, or you take the Phoenix? Or um, you go I think, there. yeah. I think in that situation, you want to take the Phoenix if you can get your Brucon set and lethal before it comes back. Yep. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. okay. That's a... Oh, that's educated ugly. Alec is... That's really something. In the mirror, that's that actually... Is, 
That's beautiful. Very annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was just going to say. That is like, uh, why? And then now you got to kill that off in whatever spell mm. um, it remembers. Yes, unless there is a way to give it spells that you that aren't necessarily great draws. Yeah. Lightning Bloom. Well, Neji doesn't know that the Fireheart is in hand, but post Brucom, Lightning Bloom is one of the best draws that uh, you can have with Fireheart. So, yeah. uh, and it seems like here Neji's going to complete stage one of the quests, which is why he bloomed. Mm -hmm. So, let's see some more card draw. No overload. And only one play. Oh, perpetual, perpetual flame. flame. And that is a card that you are very interested in putting in uh, Wild Nine's deck. Yep. Does not help a lot in this matchup. And takes care of Wild Nine's board that he. So carefully built. Yes, I think here we might see the Lightning Storm Perpetual Flame to clear this one off. But it still does leave leave Wild Nine uh, one Overload card short of Brukan yep. next to the nerf. <clears throat> one card closer. Yes, but... You rip the lightning storm first, obviously. I think that, well, we're not going to see that. It looks like three six. Which can... I think is reasonable. Oh, well, yeah. that might be helpful. Yes, it works out. So, unfortunately, though, the mana is still a little bit awkward for Wild Nine next turn. Yeah, and we won't be able to see a Brucon come down. <clears throat> Oh, is that a natural devolving missiles in Neji Boston's deck? That is uh that not, is not always run currently on in the latter versions of the list. It's just a, a little bit of spice. Just a bit, yeah. Overdraft. Get that mana back. Oh. There's a that's a very good That's rule. A, a pretty okay <laughs> rule. Way to go, Neji, on that one. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <clears throat> well, on average, this perpetual flame still cleans up, though. Yep. But I don't know. If it is, I don't a... know if we'll actually see it. I was going to say if it hits the four or five first, if he decides to throw that out there first. Mm. Um. Interesting. One. So one. Two. Does he get lucky? Three. Fifty fifty. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I don't know how lucky Wild Nine really is in this situation. <laughs> because that seems really good on the face of it, but now Wild Nine does not have the mana to play Brucon next turn. Yep. He's he's in He's in stasis right now. So we will probably see the wind chill here. And now if if, if Neji comes out with a mutanus in this in this type of deck, I'd be mm. be pretty upset. <laughs> it would be if quite I'm... telling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. Interesting they're not to, interesting choice not to cycle the wind chill. I think that uh in spite of his early Brucon, Wild Nine's expecting the game to go long. Must be saving it for something off of a charge call. Okay. Players telling each other to chill out, so... And... Oof. Big draw. Smashed it on the board and I think so. I think you uh, have to be a little scared of potential burn coming from Neji, but I that's a very good set of draws. All right, that's start counting. 
So, so far, Three. that is 10 damage that Neji, is, Neji Boston is representing, 11 with the Lady Vash. I think, though, that probably set up his Brucon would be the expectation here. So Canal Slogger plus Lightning Bolt and maybe follow it up with a charge call for Tempo. I think if uh, I think if I was there, that would be the play I'd consider. Mm-hmm. Hmm. If Neji's really uh, feeling the spice, though, we could see a charge call here if uh, there is a potential 8-mana minion that could make a difference. But I is it don't... the seven seven mana mi- minions that are not that great right now? Seven mana seven mana is really feast or famine. I think that six drop is probably the one before ten and eight that I'm most interested in. Yeah. But seven, you can sometimes get Keymaster Alabaster. Oh, right. Which can be very powerful. Wow. So does I was just gonna say does Brucon come down and I think Brucon, Lightning Bloom, and uh, Windchill or Primordial Studies. We're just going off. There's right. definitely like yeah. Guild Trader. Yes. Another one. We like Guild Trader, oh. but sure, that's fine. Hmm. I think we might see. Uh, Wild Knight save that guild trader for the Fireheart turn. Another happy guilding. Oh, cycle. Oh boy. Some explosiveness. So, Ten cards, you gotta get rid of something. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of damage coming in. We're gonna probably see Feral Spirits and Overdraft. <clears throat> oh boy. Feral Spirit's doing twice now. Does he have lethal? Not lethal, but it only gets the discount once, but 12. That's a lot of damage. And on the other side... Oh, boy. Well... <laughs> I think here we probably see Lightning Bolt, Brucon... And then the lightning bloom, and probably shenanigans afterwards. <laughs> so, top, top deck shenanigans. There you go. Ow. The question, though, is: Does Neji confidently go Fireheart to close out the game, or do we see some charge calls to just get on board? Oh, oh we're gonna the see the we're gonna see the chill. Probably looking for overdraft. Oh, another lightning bolt. Perpetual Flame. That's oh. worth a Lightning Bloom twice, so it's six. Yep, I think Lightning Bloom Fireheart if he's going for lethal, or we'll see something a little bit more conservative. Nope, he's going to go for it. Discover quickly. Gotta go fast. Oh, it's just a little slow. Now so charge, charge Call. Get some Dark tons. Moon Rabbit. Dark Moon Rabbit. Or, yep, okay, that works. Oh, no! Oh, yeah. uh, I had to play fast, but uh, I, I don't think it's going to matter here. I nope. think uh, Wild oh, Nice is going it. to mop it up. Yep. <laughs> well, there you go. That'll do it. Looks like uh, Neji Boston had the upper hand early, but. Wild nine. Forch- yeah, he got there. Coming in with the big W. Yep, I think uh seems like going more aggressively for quest completion paid off a bit more than trying to play the long value game. I was just gonna ask if uh does does this matchup or mirror matchup really rely on who, who gets who completes the quest first and at least from tonight's standpoint, yes. Wild nine one. I think that both players drawing multicaster was pretty huge. 
Yep. Use, a lot of the time, the mirror can be a stall if neither player finds it early. And sometimes someone will have to commit an instructor fire heart just to complete the quest instead of saving it for a lethal push. And Wild Nine didn't even need need his. He just assembled the burn. Yep. Was very patient and things just fell into place like you, like you hope. But we're just waiting for the players to make a choice. So does Neji come back out with the with the shaman, or is he going demon hunter, or even oh. warrior for that matter? I think at this point, I would just bring the warrior. I'm uh, you have your the two matchups you're looking for in uh, demon hunter and hunter. So, yep, that's what we see. All right. Oh. <laughs> Wild Nine came prepared. <laughs> that's a uh, that's a tough look for Neji Boston. So Neji's gonna find out that it is. Uh, I guess it's called Beast Hunter. Is that right? Yeah. So there are a few builds you can do with this deck. I know that uh, when Fractured and Alterac Valley released, this was actually the first deck I played on ladder, mm -hmm. and the version that I used was a King Crush combo finisher with Revive Pet, but. He, we could see Wing Commander Ikmin as a potential finisher, Jewel of Nizoth. There are a lot of choices, but the key cards to look out for are Mountain Bear, which Warrior really doesn't have a lot of answers to. 5-6 uh, Taunt that makes 2-2-4 two, two, Taunts just lines up very well into Warrior's removal suite, and they have a tough time beating it. The other one is, of course, the hero card, uh, Tavish. So... Tavish making the secrets is also going to be big game. Oh, and we do see a Revive Pet and Jewel of Nizoth wow. and Guardian Animals. Holy Wild moly. Nine just went full <laughs> greed. This is excellent. <laughs> so this is going to be the first time I get to see this uh, yep. This in action. I've... Oh, there's yeah, your King so... Crush, buddy. So A bit of, bit of unfortunate luck. That's almost like drawing patches <laughs> in, uh, in this matchup because... If uh, Wild Nine is also playing the uh, the uh, Trapper, the two mana one three that discovers a copy of a beast in your deck, you can actually generate multiple King Crushes. Oh, good, but good heavens! All right, we're not going to see that. Nope. Wild Nine highlighting guardian animals there, trying to uh -huh. figure out. Right. <laughs> So oh, seeing that uh, imported tarantula, Neshi Boston has to be sweating a little bit now. And up oh, there's the petting zoo. Yeah. So I think here we might see a uh, coin uh, spring the trap. Nope. See the hero power. Play it slow. Get that but, armor down. Yeah. Neshi so spring the trap here is great. This is going to set up an explosive trap petting zoo next turn. See the ice trap. Draw two. Freezing and Ice Trap are both great rolls. I've never I seen wonder... this card you played yet, the Shield Shatter yet. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be pretty effective into the Petting Zoo, but... The challenge for Neji Boston is going to be removing lots of animal companions and just T being able to take out the taunts repeatedly. Yep. And uh, that's the goal. From what I and from what I know about Wild Nine, I expect it to always be Huffer every time. If we get if if a Huffer comes up in chat, uh, or, or sorry, I should say chat. If Huffer comes up, we need Fs or Hs for Huffer. Let's say Hs. All right. So, explosive trap in the petting zoo. I think. Yep. Yep. We'll see three striders. And I wonder if Neji will play around the ice trap a second time, or if uh, because at this point ice trap actually does nothing with hero power and shield shatter, so. I think we'll just see the shield shatter right off the bat. Okay. 
Uh, so far, it's looking a bit uh, tough for Wild 9. Yep. Not yep. a lot of ways to put on pressure, and uh, we already see Mutinous and Rattlegore on the other side. You had those uh, big band of cards at the very beginning, which kind of set the tempo for how things are going to go. So, Yes. Yep, and there's Beast Stalker Tavish. That's all you need. Yep. I think we will see a coin Tavish here. Oh, well, I'm thinking hard on screen there, saying Stormpike, nah. Yeah, Vandar is a cool addition in this deck. Ooh, oh, we we're going right for it. Okay. Oh. I think the Mutinous is going to feast tonight. King Crush going to disappear from Wild Nine's yeah. quick wiggle of the eyebrows there from uh, from Wild Nine. Yeah, I Did think... Uh, not, not too terribly upset with that, but... Yeah, that was probably his best shot to close. We'll see. Guardian Animals. This removes the mutinous if we see the Tarantula. Yep. Interesting. Uh, a little unfortunate luck that we didn't see the second Mountain Bear there. <laughs> since Vandar actually discounts it below 5. Oh, That's really? clever deck building. Wow. Okay. Something yes. that I learned. So... Hmm. I think that for Wild Nine, the sort of game that's going played right, getting played right now is oh another beast. I don't know if that's good or bad. That's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> but you fill your hand. He's got well, he's got plenty of mana as it is anyway. And he does so. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, that goes to Wild Nine. My bad. I was thinking yes. Death Rattle, you get two, so if, he, if Neji killed it, he would get it. It will be Wild Nine receiving the coins, but now that dilutes the Jewel of Nizoth pool and the Revive Pet pool. So, actually a little bit unfortunate there for Wild Nine. Tough turn for Neji. Yep. Don't think, want to waste. Uh, yeah. Clears are important. Oh, and Headmaster Kel'Thuzad. So, there's a combo here with Headmaster Kel'Thuzad, uh, Provoke, and Lord Barov. And I think we're going to see Neji Boston duplicate his Rattlegore with that combo. Oh, gosh. Okay. It does not work the way you'd expect. So, keep an eye out for that. <laughs> I, uh, I like Ringling's Rifle here to look for... Uh, Oh, no, no rifle. We're just going to go straight tempo, as many minions as possible. And we're going to see, I think, Rattlegore come down here. If uh, if Neji has a lot of experience on this deck, we're going to see Rattlegore this turn, and then we're going to see Kel'Thuzad, Barov, and Provoke if he gets it. But Kel'Thuzad Coerce is also pretty good here. Uh, no Provoke any... Or he cycled the Provoke, so... I don't think that <clears throat> Neji Boston is aware of that interaction. We'll just have to see. Because, believe it or not, Saku, when the Lord Barov Death Rattle goes off, you will actually get any minions that the Death Rattle killed off of the Provoke. Okay. That is pretty Should. cool. It's very unique interaction. Very powerful one, too. And uh, mm. that split, which is, I guess, okay. Yeah. Which one do you kill? Teacher's pet. Faceless manipulator. Hmm. That's to get Rattlegore uh, a, a cousin or a uh, sister or brother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, with the uh, freezing trap up, Rattlegore is going to have a trick difficult time. And it seems like uh, 
Wild Nine is sensing that Neshi is light on the board clears. And we're seeing all the pressure. And there's a timely brawl. I think, uh... Yeah, I'll see that. Probably just the brawl here. And a book comes out. Oh, good outcome for uh, Neshi Boston there. Yeah. Not a lot of pressure. Nope, chopped the uh, the damage quite a bit. So, yeah, I think that the ranker is actually a reasonable choice here. Minefield armor also good. I think that's what we'll see. <clears throat> right. Didn't clear all of the Yeah. That poison level. you the poison you like to see disappear, of course. Yes. And I think uh Wild Man will go for game here. Tarantula? Yep. And, Mama uh, Bear. Yes. I think this is probably now where we'll see the Kel'Thuzad. But oh, Frozen Buckler, also very powerful. So I think taking the Mountain Bear here is probably uh. Energy Boston's best bet at defense. Yeah. But part of me knows that he wants to set up a nice and juicy ranker to try to get everything. I think that's what's being thought about right now. Because Barov ranker is also pretty powerful. <clears throat> To the front. Oh, no. That is not Frozen Buckler. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, we're... This is, uh... This is... That's gonna go very well for Neshi Boston. <laughs> that is some great tech. Alright. And then the Barov Death Rattle goes second. Incredible. Wow. I think uh Yeah. I think the script is flipped. So thanks for the minions, bud. And I don't know if there's a way out for a wild nine at this point. Mountain bear or mm -hmm. but translate coming out again. Thanks. I think at this point we might see the concede. This is looking pretty dire. And there's the bulwark. <laughs> wow. Stall. Oh. Stall, stall. You could see Radagor come down now. Pretty safe uh, with. I think, I think at this point. Neji Boston is probably making sure that he can keep this board clear and keep taunts in play. But without the King Crush, uh, Wild Nine doesn't even have much burst available unless this deck is also playing. Uh, which card is it? The six mana 4 4 that summons a minion from the deck. Nope, it's the Bulwark. Oh. Uh, Neji's just going to play it completely safe. Lord Barov will clean up the 1 1s. Yep. And you don't uh, coerce this, do you? No. Okay. Oh no. Just pop the trap and then hero power. Probably a little bit of a misorder there, but 
I think uh, Bruce Stalker Tavish is the yeah. only card that can save this. Ringling's Rifle is uh, not enough, but maybe another Explosive Trap could stall for some time. There it is. Yep. And that's, and what's that's, the choice. that's the choice we see. <clears throat> Bulwark will continue to eat hits. Now, it, now I think it's time for the Rattle Gore. And Bring the trap without uh What are you hoping for? I don't think there's really much here. You look for explosive trap. Got it. At this point though, Rokara off the top of the deck is lethal, so you just have to hope for no Rokara and I don't really think that there is any way back at this mm. point. It's just too much damage too quickly. Yeah, Freezing Trap is is basically... Neji knows that's going to be there, so you're going to throw a spider or a bear at it. So, All right, that's game. <laughs> you called it. Nope, nope, the trap ordering. We still have one more turn. So Rakara comes down, and Rakara sets up lethal on its own with the hero power and the unstoppable force. So, I think we'll probably see the heavy plate get cycled. Nope, just holds on to it, but... Guardian animals, save Wild Nine. Is there any beast here that we've forgotten? Nope, Wild Nine has found them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Just uh, a little funny. Yes, that... uh. Kel that uh, to the front was a uh, very, very nice. Uh, for the, I don't. I'm sure that that was for the Galvangar combo, but using it with uh, Kelpizad and Barov was just was just fantastic in that spot. All right. So looking back at these lineups now. How do you think uh, Wild Nine is going to get this hunter through oh. Neji Boston's Shaman or Demon Hunter? That's uh, I think it's going to be last. So I think Demon Hunter is coming out for Wild Nine. Mm -hmm. um, everything else is just going to be pretty pretty slow. Excellent. Well, we already know that Neji Boston's Shaman has the devolving missiles. Yep. Which uh, is a big problem for Wild Nine's hunter, but. Maybe maybe Wild Nine can just put enough taunts on the board to stop the expendable performers combo if that's what we're seeing out of Neji. But, oh, that is uh not the way you expect a control warrior versus a big beast hunter to go. That was really that was a spectacle. <laughs> All right. Match game number three coming up. Oh, it's oh, the hunter and the demon hunter. hunter so. yeah. I think... I, I got to win with it, so I got to figure this out. Yeah, I think this is do or die for Wild Nine here. Neji with the standard DH. Yeah. Purchased style. Uh, just to update our players out there, there have been no games played between uh, Clown, uh, Clownstone Academy and versus Defias. This is the first one, so it's all tied up at 0-0. Zero, zero, so. All right. See, see which, uh, which captain draws blood first. Uh, it looks like we are seeing... Uh... Wing Commander Ickman here. And Wild Nine getting unfortunate with King Crush. 
Yes. Gave him a hug and a kiss. Didn't miss him being in the deck so long. Yeah. And uh, at this point, Neji Boston is just looking for Kurtris. He already has the uh, the Fellfire Deadeye and the Expendable Performers. Right. <laughs> yeah, just just cut news of that. Just uh, the the double seven, so it's going to shut off any 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 lovely uh, skull action going on. So yes, I think uh, I think Nancy is just trying to plan for this petting zoo for now, but. Ladari studies. Kurtris is uh, tough because of the freezing trap. Yep. But Glide also is a little bit awkward. Skull is also at the wrong time. And I don't think these are the best choices. Is it pick Glide? Because mm. Wild Nine right now, he's he's in a rough spot too with some high... I mean, a card. Yeah. He didn't really have too much to go on right at the, his next oh. turn. So, oh well, oh, boy. I can already say that uh, Wild Nine has gotten the best of this glide. I yep. think. Uh, oh, and the Vandar as well. I think that that's a sure take at this point. But maybe not. Just the tarantula for Leorox is a consideration. Mm -hmm. Oh, see the Vandar. Favorite card, Vandar. Tonight, anyway. Mm. All right, we have Chaos Strike, Skull of Gul'dan. So I think we're going to see this hand get uh, vacated pretty quickly. Right. Yeah. Wow. Mama Bear coming out. Yeah, so the Lior. So, a bit unfortunate for Wild Nine that still has a board. But if we see a clear here from Neji Boston, we'll probably see one of the most powerful plays from the Beast Hunter, which is setting up the improved pack tactics with Beast Stalker Tavish and then playing Mountain Bear as a follow up. Okay. Because with a deck like uh, Demon Hunter here, the Fell Demon Hunter. There's not a lot of options to remove a six health minion with just spells from hand. And I think with the clear board, we're just going to see uh, Wild Nine make a play for this. So I see, I'm guessing we'll see the improved pack tactics here, mm -hmm. which is what we see. And then cages, trap. Mm. I think cages and ice trap are both worthy considerations. I, I would probably take the Ice Trap here, but yeah, and that's what he goes for. But it's a tough call. I think both of them have merits. And oh, Neji Boston did bring the Magtheridon. Uncle Mag is coming out. Maybe. Indeed. All right. Bell Forger again? Is that what he was hovering? No. He was. I think we'll probably see it. I don't think there's a much better play here. And now I think we will see probably just the mountain bear right on curve. And... Oh, there's Kurtris. Kurtris, you play it or you leave it. I think uh, if Neji is familiar with the deck, we will probably see a talented Arcanist Chaos Strike to remove the Mountain Bear cleanly. But if that's not what happens, I think uh, he's in for a world of hurt. So I think we're going to see the Kurtris and we're going to see the Hard Punish. All right, golden Kurtris, all gold, everything. There it is. Seven four running into it. 
Yes, and now, now we can see why uh, Davis is so powerful. So that's a very and Wild Nine's hovering the jewel. He knows <laughs> this is. <laughs> I don't this like is, this board. <laughs> this is going to be a very hard one for the Demon Hunter to push through. Especially with the hand we know that Neji Boston has. Yeah. Alright. Jewel of Nizoth comes out, or? I think we'll probably just see development in the hero power. Okay. But I think uh, I think Neji will probably consider saving the revive pet for uh, for a king crush. We also could just see the Leorox right now. I like that play. Yeah, that's a good choice. Just put put as much pressure on the board as you can. Yep. And well, timely immolation aura, but. Yeah, Neji, Neji made a couple of facial reactions to the the board and then, then shook his head and acknowledged, okay, all right. Got a little bit of a chance here with Himmo. Yes. Himmo. All right, Ice Trap. Well, nine, taking a quick think and a count. What yeah. can you do? What to do? What to do? Uh, I think it's pretty key that Neji does not leave a uh, talented Arcanist unattended on the board. I think that he, if he does choose to use them... Oh, we're just going to see Megtheridon right away. There you go. All right. So, Megtheridon actually triggers here on the first hit of Immolation Aura, which is why Neji Boston made that hit first. So, the Tarantulas are actually going to stay alive and clean up the Megtheridon. But no, they die here to the emulation. That's right. It's a long animation. <laughs> but uh, Wing Commander Ikmin doesn't really work. I don't think that's a very good choice. Julian Nizoff looks promising. I think that's the tempo choice. Mm -hmm. But you ideally want to pair it with a hero power. So what do we get? Oh, that's Come good. On. Oh, no! Oh, and an Elec. <laughs> Huh. That's a problem. Mechtheridon, though, is uh, pulling its weight in this matchup. Uh, the magic number on the on this Meg Theridon is four health to guarantee that your beast can summon a second one. Okay. So if Neji Boston does choose to attack it into one of the mountain bears, and and I think Wing Commander Ikman will probably be what comes next. Oh, there's Fellfire Dead Eye. Yeah. Oh, Dead Eye coming out. So. But no clear. Do you think there's a chance we see a Fury Lethal later in the game from Wild Nine? <laughs> it's a high, high possibility. Oh, wait. Is the coin good here? What does the coin do? So, Coin allows for Ikmin plus a uh, Animal Companion, which is... <laughs> or Ikmin plus Ice Trap. Which also would be very good. What have we here? But I think we see the Ikmin, and we're hoping to see King Crush last. 
Ikman, Ikman hits King Crush, and that's lethal sometimes. So Tarantula... Tarantula kills Magtheridon. We see oh. King Crush. All right. And uh, there's no space for the Animal Companion. But oh. we'll see... Do we, <laughs> I think... Uh, he doesn't think... want to dilute the deck. Nope. Uh, now there's a lot of animals. <laughs> I don't know if this revive pet is going to uh, get there. Stelina and Chaos Leech. Runner. I think it's got to be the Chaos Leech. I don't. You have to remove all of this. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. go for the the fourth? I mean, you're are you dead next turn? Or this? I turn? mean, I think Neji Boston's at one one life. Yeah. So I think that he is very dead, barring, because we can see a gain nine, Immolation Aura. Oh, that's tough. Go for Aura first, because you have to use the, uh, you have to use the Talented Arcanist to gain health. Yeah. Okay. Chaos Leech. Leech the yeah okay. Yep. Put as many spells in the deck as you can and uh, pray for a brick. So Back going to 20, twenty life. But now there's a just a fellfire dead eye in hand and a stream of animal companions coming down the pipe. Guardian animals. Oh, I think I'll see that. Guardian. What is Guardian bringing out? A tarantula and, and another pet? Oh, Teacher's Pet's an option. It looks like Mountain Bear is still an option. And that's what we see. Okay. Beach. And uh, probably preserve the health on the Mountain Bear, but I don't th know if it'll even matter. Oh. I think here we probably see the Ice Trap to play around expendable performers. <clears throat> yep. And that's exactly what we'll see. Okay. No performers, and I think looks pretty dire for Neji Boston. Get rid of the ice trap again. Yeah. And at this point, you just hold back. I don't think there's anything you can swing at. Nope, you're not gonna. And now, uh, Ringling's rifle. I think. Well, we go looking for King Crush first, right? Yep, nope, nothing there. Oh, he... No. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so many beasts have died this game. Un incredible. <laughs> uh, so... Snatch the pebble so from my hand, and that's what happened. <laughs> Huge pickup there for Wild 9. Oh my goodness, yep. That, uh... I think, uh, that little bit of unfamiliarity there with the, uh... With the improved pack tactics, I think cost Neji Boston that game. And you know, we had caster, vi we had the caster vision, so we saw what was going on. But that glide also really hurt. It seemed to hurt his chances. But we go right back into it. We now have a quest shaman back up against Wild Knight Demon Hunter, and uh, looks like. Uh, Another fell demon hunter list. Nothing, nothing crazy this week. Nope. Just the, uh, just the control hunter that uh, managed to get through the fell demon hunter on the other side. Wild nine gonna be what? Mulligan, Jace, and. Maybe Felgorger? Maybe? No, I think that keeping the card draw is just Ooh, too good. And ideal. Well, Skull on the left. Yep. And ideal. this is... This matchup tends to be a very good one for Fel Demon Hunter. So... Yeah, the little health minions that are, that are coming out of uh, Shaman, for most part, until they charge up yeah. their... Charge Skull? Yes, and one of the problems that Shaman actually has in this matchup... 
is that cards like Perpetual Flame really can't be played very often. Yeah. So you also have to play Windchill at negative tempo. At Wild Nine's assembled his combo already. He just needs to find Kurtris. <clears throat> and the Shaman has to develop their quest reward and somehow deal with the you know, the Kurtris combo with expendable performers. Once Shaman has their quest reward on the board, Demon Hunter just has a license to go face for their whole life total if Shaman can't produce taunts. Like one of the only ways that I've seen Shaman win this matchup is with a charge call to get a scrapyard colossus and then follow that up with a vivid spores from guidance or an instructor fireheart. And that might be what we need to see. I think here Humans. I like probably Coin Felgorger. Mm -hmm. I think that for Wild Nine, drawing as many cards as he can is really important in this matchup. And the less likely Neji Boston is to have Perpetual Flame when you have a minion, the better. So... Tough choice, but we'll see how Wild Nine navigates it. Suspend a combo piece. Now, the updating our Dante and Robobson on the status of this game, and uh, looks like Neji's doing the freeze option with a couple card pulls. Guidance is great. Oh, two overload easy. cards. Yeah, that <laughs> was an easy Pulse. snap pick. Yeah. I mean, the overload. Normally, I, normally I'd like the Demon Hunter's chances, but it seems like Neji Boston's opening draw is just quite a bit more powerful. Devolving missiles I don't think will help very much here. Yeah. There's a second expendable. Fell screen blasts. At least next turn you can you rip the skull because there's really not that much board presence right now and being caster visioned the uh, only yes. thing maybe be um, the fell spirit. I think we'll probably see feral spirits and lightning feral. bolt come out here oh. and then maybe a cycle of the overdraft. Yeah. That's... Or Feral Spirits, Lightning Bolt, push face damage. Interesting. Okay, we might see Double Bolt. Okay, we're going to see Double Bolt and then the Overdraft next turn. Put the most, uh, now that... most bodies on the board? Yeah. Puts, the most, puts a lot of bodies in play, and I think this is the play to Pressure Skull. Ectheridon. Not enough yet. Close. It is close. And I think that we do. There is a clear here with uh, Immolation Aura and Fell Screen Blast. Uh, oh no, Magtheridon is a clear. He still has the coin. So uh, I think the Devolving Missiles might do something after all. Wild Nine closet back. Charge call. Should be at six now, is it? Seven. Seven. So I think the devolving missiles is non negotiable, but overdraft is an option. Do the cycle. That's what it looks like here. And off the top, it's Windchill. Ooh. Ooh. You see? It might be better than Missiles, but no. It's Missiles, Windchill. So reduce it down to one. Oh, yeah. one four. <laughs> right. Primordial Studies. Okay. 
wonder what we'll see this turn. It's the skull. Felgorger. And still no Kurtris. And that skull is uh, not very easy to play. Yeah. Oh. I think it's a bit risky here, but there's a chance we could see Neji Boston go for the charge call. To try to just put as much on the board as, yeah. as he can. Blogger can come down with charge call. No, that's the thought. So I don't think this is not an easy matchup, and that's a good one. Sort of Drake. Yep. Yep. Well, big minions on the board that uh, Wild Nine is looking at. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Curtis good. Chaos Leech Skull looks pretty good here. Get that 6-3. Yeah. Oh. oh, oh, we're going. Uh... Interesting. Fell Barrage, Chaos oh. Leech, and Fury. Okay. Still no Kurtris, though. Kurtris is being shy. Yep. And the Fel Barrage cleans that up nicely. This uh, this actually works out for Neji if that doesn't get cleared. I I think it's a pretty reliable clear because oh, it's one short. short. So yeah, he's gonna opt to clear the Kelthus here and to go for the full yeah, using all the resources, but <clears throat> yep. If uh, the Primordial Studies can get Neji a card that he needs, be back in the game. Thalnos. Thalnos and Vash are both potential. I think you just slam it. Yep. And I think there's some thought to playing Lightning Storm there. Ooh, there's a Fel Barrage. Oof. I think from Wild Nine, Gorger, Chaos Strike. Uh, wow. Don't look, it's Kurtris. Oh no, it's just Jace. It's only Jace. Jace uh, in your so... face with eight cards left in deck. Um, yeah. So, I wonder here if we'll see the talented Arcanist Fel Barrage. And we'll and some sort of push. I, grow impatient. To kind of I don't feel... think it's necessarily the right choice, but I could see why, you know, without caster vision, Wild Nine might be thinking about it. Yeah. Just kind of fill up Jace a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go for it. You're only adding two extra damage with that. And you're giving the card draw right away, but maybe that damage is enough. <clears throat> All right, and that is Brucon. So I think here is probably a cycle overdraft, and then you play your perpetual flame, novice zapper, and Brucon. Because being able to develop Brucon before Kurtris is a huge win for Neshi Boston. Lightning Storm instead. Yep. Okay. The only thing I don't love about that play is that if Multicaster is one of the next cards to come up, Neshi Boston will be drawing one less card. Okay. And. That could come back to haunt him. Jace. It's the slow countdown. Wild Nine's been anticipating. <laughs> yeah. I think I like the expendable performers a little bit better there, but... Wow. This is pressure. Oh. Takes out his own dude, so eight. Yep. Ten. Still no Kurtris. You do 11 or you do Illidary Studies? I think you just do 11 here. Yeah. Well, 
And I don't think Illidari's studies can quite find lethal. Oh, see, and there's Multicaster. <laughs> so, we'll see the Multicaster surely, but... Let's see how that plays out. Lightning Bloom? Oh. Serpent Shrine Portal? Charge Call. Oh, Absolute gasoline. Oh. All right, let's see. <laughs> Put some big, uh... Get those, uh, seven tons. sevens. Yep. <laughs> Colossuses will come out. The class I Colossuses. Yep. And Whatever. we see Deathwing. No Colossus, but wow. two Deathwings is, uh, pretty formidable. I don't think that that's an easy clear. I think here, though, the, uh, Lightning Bloom Serpent Shrine Portal Overdraft is, uh... 27. Yep. Pretty good way to close out the turn. Set up Lethal. If you're going to do the... No, Bloom doesn't get it there. Oh, yeah, Bloom does. Yep. Or six. Bloom gets to four mana. And this is a lot of damage. All right. Okay. Now, I, I think you ripped the overdraft here. Yeah, you're not... You got six crystals... Overloaded. Right six now, overloaded. So might as well throw it at the face and get 12 in there. Or six. Yeah. Okay. And tote him up too. Why that. not? Why not? Oh. Um. Oh, that is a... God. <laughs> it's a pretty good immolation, Ara, mm. but I think we'll need to see the study here. Well, he's pretty good, but I don't know if it's enough. There's a talented Arcanist in the deck. I think it's got to be Skull and Prey. Skull and Hope, yep. That is the... Oh, no, we're going to go Spectral Sight and Prey. Spendables are going to take at least one of these 12-12s. Uh, I don't think this is a winning line. It is not enough damage. Fifteen stays on the board. One short. Yeah, Wild Nine's reaction just showed that, so... Yeah. Best words oh. in all of THL Hearthstone. Game five, folks. Yes, and... Uh, we're gonna have... Uh, Classic. Yeah, Demon Hunter. Up against... The mirror we have coming up? Yep. It is oh boy. a mirror. Seeing how both players have handled their situations, I think that uh, Neji has appeared to be a bit more comfortable on the deck. But... We'll see... Uh, We'll see which player can get the edge. Uh, from Wild Knight's hand, I think that you really want to look for Skull and look for Kurtris. Those are those are the important cards. Yep. Since uh, I don't... Kurtris was very evasive uh, in Wild Nine's deck. Um, yes. That would be my 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 hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, Wild Nine goes for the full mulligan, and uh, well, Kurtris is, is, hey. is here. Kurtris showed up at the party, and he also has Dead Eye to uh, to accompany him. So there you go. All you need is your expendables, and you're rocking and rolling theoretically. We'll apologize to our viewers out there. I have uh, Dankestad, uh, who is um, betraying my Anadon from Sunday night. So <laughs> forgot to change your your name. So oh, no worries. Tonight you are my Anadon. That's okay. Dankestad isn't even my real name. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> All right. 
so far from these starting hands, uh, I would rather be in wild nine seat. A uh, handful of removal is just not quite as good as the hand with uh, Kurtris and Fellfire Deadeye in it. And we see the I-Beam come out over the Glide. And uh, that is a Skull of Gul'dan. A silent yeah. aura. Yep. Smart cycle from Neji. Get that skull a little bit closer to playable. Second dead eye for Wild Nine. Now is the Expendables going to be at the bottom? Thirty-two. <laughs> I don't think Wild Nine really has to worry about that. Yeah. For now, I think that the keys to the game are just making sure that he has the chance to mag Theridon early. Mm -hmm. Because well, it's in, or it's a little bit difficult because with Magtheridon in the mirror, if you you want to be able to get it early, but you also don't want to play it into their Magtheridon because that's a complete disaster. So think, yeah, I was just gonna say, do you think uh, Wild Nine's got a good read on? Yeah, okay. So I think Wild Nine is thinking that Niji Boston doesn't have it, which is a good guess right now, but. So also lets Neji push quite a bit. Yep, so what's Neji got? He's got... Can't use Aura. Uh, Neji has absolutely no cards that he would want to play. Yeah. I think that... Uh, if I'm Neji, I know it's awkward, but in this spot, I would probably play the Fury so that next turn... Uh, you can't even set up a clear next turn. But I think that getting the Fury out of hand might be the play. So here I'm sure we'll see the Talented Arcanist Fell Screen Blast. And... Right now, Neji Boston is one damage short of clearing this Magtheridon. He can do 11 to it. But that is less than 12. Yep. Kurtris. Kurtris, but... So, I think at this point, you just have to accept that Magtheridon is going to hit your face. At least Kurtris once. can clean it up next turn, though. So, it is not all bad. I think this is probably just Fury into uh, Hero Power. Mm -hmm. I think Neji Boston's doing the counting now. For a half second, I thought he hit. He was going to hit the Megatheridon. I was like, uh, nope. <laughs> just the hesitation when it came out, so. Yeah. All right. All right. So, hmm. I think we just have to see Kurtris. <gasps> so let's count some damage here, because this is a Fellfire Deadeye that's already on the board. So, Kurtris will. So we have Hero Power, Kurtris, Hero Power. Fellfire Deadeye hits Hero Power. That's seven damage coming in from Kurtris, right? Yeah. Or seven more? Oh. It's a good thing Neji Boston has a Chaos Leech. Yeah. Down to eight. Chaos Leech is going to... Help recover some of the uh, well, the damage. You know, it's a little bit awkward because it seems like you want to Chaos Leech and you want to either Fel Barrage or Immolation R to clear this off. But you can't get the Outcast on the Chaos Leech and get the clear. So I think Neji is probably going to use Chaos Leech to remove the 2-3 and then use an Arcanist combo with with Immolation R to clear off the rest of the board. And then try to follow that up with a Skull. And 
So I think that uh, Neji Basin desperately needs Maldrachi Warglaves to catch up. Alright. Oh, we're going to see a Thalnos. Thalnos and... Oh, and we're going to hold the... We're, we're holding the Chaos Leech to get full value. And, oh, there's Warglaves. We got... Okay. Arcanist off the top. Oh, Felgorger. Felgorger could be lethal. Nope. <laughs> I was half thinking he'd do uh, Fel Barrage, but now he's doing it. Yeah. Two to, two to the dome, and two left. Uh, so... I think now is the time, but what's awkward here is that the talented Arcanist is kind of is stranded on the board, and this is the last turn that Neji Boston can do it before the full Dead Eye Performers combo is available. So we'll see if Neji sees that and goes for the Chaos Leech with the with the Arcanist, or if he just opts for Leech Warglaves Hero Power Fury. All right. So we see this play instead. Back to 12. 12 yep. So Jace is lethal. Uh, Skull of Gul'dan is a pretty good draw. Pretty okay. Chaos Leech. Chaos Leech. Oops, Performers. Eldari is rip now. Yep, you rip it. Yeah, I don't think you glide this hand away. Nope. Spectral Sight. I agree. Felgorger and War Warblades. Okay. And unfortunately, Neji Boston's pretty much unable to do anything. But, oh. This could be Glide. If Glide is there, nope. Oh. Unless he's got Glide in his deck. I expect that. Uh, just one turn too late. Oh, gosh. I think uh, <laughs> I think here you go for empty skull or non outcast skull yeah. and here and or you hero power attack and develop warglaves right Felgorger just short well, well the problem now though is that I think that this is this is lethal. this is lethal yeah. for uh, wild nine I. Although we know ne Neji Boss is going to heal, but hmm. I think that the play is probably swing and develop Warglaive. I think that that's the play, even if it's a little awkward. But we'll see how Neji Boston chooses to navigate it. Is the matchup familiarity there, or is he just? Okay. Yep. I think that's the best play from that position. Poke and well hit, done. Get more. Blood Mage Thalnos, but that's not it. Nope. And, uh. Let's see. I don't know if. I, since it's not lethal, I don't think that Wild Nine can commit the combo here. I think we'll probably see another Warglaive's turn coming this way. Just Warglaves. Or Warblades, excuse me. Sorry, yeah. Um, so what's left in his deck? So he's got Felgorger. He plays Felgorger now. So I don't... I think Felgorger is okay. But if you play Felgorger, what do we see? Fury. Okay. Of course, very good. I think you probably hold that. Yep. Air power and yep, punch. Yep, with the weapon. Uh, 
So we're back to 30. No surprise mech third on lethals. Chaos Leech is smart there to deny healing on the Jace coming the other way. Ah, see, I like studying. Let's see. Yep. Could this be Glide? Glide, glide, slippity slide. All right. Is he rolling through all the options? Uh, I think the other one to consider is Talented Arcanist first, just to eke out a little Arcanist, Fel Barrage, and then Jace, just to eke out a little bit more healing. But I don't think that's what we'll see. Chaos Leech and Crimson Sigil Runner are the two choices that the promising here. I think it's going to be Chaos Leech and Arcanist. Oh, let's go right for the Jace. So, the only issue with this play here is that it really limits the amount of healing that uh, Neji Boston can actually get from his removals. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So we got 19. Yeah. Okay. And Chaos Strike. I, I mean, Jace is it at this point. So we'll see if uh, Wild Nine's got it. Nope. nope. No Jace, but I think here, once again, I would uh, advocate for the. Uh, oh, nope. Another chance. We'll see. Ara. I think at this point I would I'm advocating for the uh non outcast skull. I think that uh it's definitely going to give you better than fifty percent to see Jace before your next draw. I think that's kind of a requirement to win at this point. Uh, right. Egg. Pendulum swings the other way, but now Wild Nine is out of Warglaves. Yeah, that's the one thing I was thinking of is he bother hitting, but he's got no choice because he needs to yeah. heal. So. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, if you're uh, Neji Boston here, you have a very clean turn with Arcanist, Chaos Leech, and Skull to try to dig deeper to find your your ways to win. Because for him... The actual win condition here is to execute the co combo using Magtheridon as a generator of bodies. So let's see if uh, Neji Boston can find the performers. Nope. Nope. Those are good finds, though. Those can swing the life total back. Because you're just scared of Jace at this point. There's a dead eye. Another skull. All right. We'll see if Wild Nine finds Jace. Nope. Chaos strikes. Chaos strike is sometimes Jace. Be able to play it this turn as well. So. And, yep, and that's that's it. I think I think Wild Nine is going home. Our winner. Jace to the face. If my math is correct. So. But or is it just or is it not? Because we have two Chaos Strikes, we have two Fury at rank 3, which is another 14 damage and a Fel Barrage. So this Jace is lethal. Wild Nines, I'm sure, just doing the math and counting it up, but... Hey. So once this match completes, uh, we're going to jump right into um, Rebobson and, and Donde while Wild Nine determines whether it is lethal or not. So just to... Uh, speed the process a little bit. Rebobson has banned Donde's Warlock and Donde's banned Rebobson's Shaman. So we get into that in a few moments. So we we know that uh, there is lethal. There it is. Yeah. I think uh, I think both players put themselves into. A precarious spot and really walk that fine line. Yep. I think well played game, but well played series and 
good outcome for Wild 9. That's right. So, congrats to Wild 9 and a uh, well played match by both players. Uh, Neji definitely um, it was just a race to Jace in this case. <laughs> that was bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're going to jump right into the uh, Dom Day and um, Rebobson uh, uh, match. So if you want to, you want to um, uh, just go over the uh, the the lineups. I'm going to have the deck list up while I let the guys get uh, configured here. So sure. All right. So taking a look at this, we're seeing yet another control warrior coming from Dom Day. I think that uh, <laughs> this one I probably is this is a very similar, if not the, or it's similar but not the same as the list that we just saw from Neji Boston. <laughs> Dante has opted for the uh, Silas Dark Moon Soulbound Ash Tongue finisher instead of the uh, instead of the Charge finish that is that is also common for this deck. Dunday also has the Shadow Priest, which seems to be tuned to fight off aggro. Both players brought Quest Shaman and, of course, the Quest Warlock. I think uh, Dunday is going to be really happy to face this Beast Druid. But other than that, Quest Rogue and uh, Quest Warlock seem like they're just tough matchups for the lineup. So I think that... I think that just the way that the lists are tuned, I am. Uh, I think Robobson is the is my pick for this matchup. I think that his that his lineup just seems a little bit better suited. But okay, maybe Donde knows something that I don't. All right, so we're. Uh, I just let the players let them know that they can start. So that's what we'll do. Um. Didn't put the fans on the on the board yet, but I will get to that. Just waiting for the eyeball. So for our spectators, we're going to have uh, Dante at the bottom of the screen um, with uh, Ribobson uh, at the top. So. for eyeballs to kick in. Just for people that haven't gone to the website yet, currently F2L is down two points uh, to Mr. Smite's side, or of two to four. Okay. Trying to get into the match. Yep. Quick second to go the bands. So this is a pro series, um, so it's going to be conquest rules. You win with your win with your deck, then you can't play it, and you move on to the next deck. So off the bat, it looks like uh, Dunday's got a tough matchup. Especially without the charge finisher, it's going to be di very difficult for the warrior to stack armor uh, against the quest warlock's fatigue win condition. I think, though, that Dunday will have a... Good shot at keeping the board clear of Anutheron and Flesh Giants, but once that uh, once that deck is empty for Robobson, I think uh, Dunday could be in some trouble. Job's done. Okay. Already we see a backfire. Altar of Fire. I think that is a good sign 
for Rip Bobson's uh, early game. Second backfire, wow. I don't think Robobson could have drawn it up better. Nope. Cam's here, so. Here we go. Boyer. Rushy Tunis, Tough. favorite uh, favorite hero icon for Warlock is Mechathir. Or, uh, what's his face? <laughs> Mechadraxis. Mechadraxis, there you go. All right. A little bit of a tricky first few turns to navigate for Robobson. Has to make sure that he does not draw too many cards. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Donde is doing my favorite activity in Hearthstone of uh, pressing the armor button and passing. Robobson's eight cards in hand. I think uh well it's not the most impressive play. I think developing developing the minions and getting cards out of hand might be the way to go from here. Alright. Oh, another tour guide. Can't have too many tour guides, right? That you cannot. And that uh, sets up a nice tour guide backfire turn for Robobson on four. I think uh, for Donde, you just have to take the Outrider's Axe and start chopping them down. Tamsin. Tamsin Soul Rend is another way to get to fatigue more quickly. And, uh, yeah. Second level of his uh, quest line. Yes, and uh, chooses to deny Dunday the card draw by mm -hmm. uh, using Touch with the Nazarim on his own tour guide. My tour guide is what he's saying. Yeah. I think uh, here Dunday uh, looks like he's in a good spot to just play the minions on the curve. We uh, think the uh, Scrap Golem is probably a reasonable option, but the Anchorman does dodge removal. So. And they elect to go with the Scrap Golem, hold back the Axe, and Red Lich Tamsin. Uh, Robobson has drawn all the cards that draw cards. <laughs> We're probably going to see Fatigue around maybe turn 8 or so. This is... Favorable for, for Bobson, obviously. Absolutely. Altar of Fire. Uh, burn a rat. Oh, Sylvia. Mutinous, Mutinous, Silas, Dark Moon, and Provoke. From Donde's deck and Shadow Blade Slinger, Battlegrounds Battlemaster, and Goldshire Knoll from his own. None of those cards are ones that I think that Robobson will miss, but. Silas Darkmoon is going to make it very difficult for Donde to win without uh, using the Nizoth. Yep. All right. Four or five just dies going into, but does he get he gets six armor? Yeah. Five. So. Well, that means uh, so four four. Had to reread the card. Gain gain. Uh, armor equal to this minion's attack. So, because mm -hmm. we could see, there are a lot of ways to clear the board. The way that ends with the most armor would be using the heavy plate. After, so would be attack with outrider's axe into one, attack with the golem into the other, use the heavy plate, and then shield shatter okay. to secure the clear. The other option is, hmm. oh. Dunde doesn't have to clear, I guess. So we'll draw a card. We could see Heavy Plate, Shield Slam, followed by Button. 
The shield slams are less important to hold now that the Silas is gone. Gone, so, yep. Yep. All right, so now those shield shatters are on, and I think, uh, yep, see the tap, flesh giant, and a tour guide. guide for another tap next turn. Yep. We'll see if uh, Robobson chooses to prioritize the quest advancement and self-damage or the imps from Tamsin's uh, hero power. Because I think that getting those imps online and just generating pressure that way is probably one of the best no. one of the best tools you have to just stall Donde and make sure that your fatigue damage gets where it needs to. Hmm. But want to thank uh, Robobson for staying up super late. It's probably about 2 in the morning for him right now, working on oh, 3 yes. in the morning. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> what now? Being in the UK, in this case, thankfully he's a night owl. Yes. Well, I don't think I get up that late these days. <laughs> Uh, one one p.m. one a.m. for me is my the latest I will I will stay. My my brain doesn't function the next day after after a late night. So. Yep. Oh, and there's Nazoth. Dundee's hand so, is a little bit chunky. So it is chunky, but that Nazoth could get him quite a bit of armor. Mm -hmm. So right now we've seen the mech. We have also seen two options for the pirate in hand, in Stone Mall Anchorman and Cargo Guard. I don't think that you can out-armor the fatigue win condition, but yeah, don't they might hang around for a little bit. Bob's some six cards away from going into fatigue. Headmaster Kelpazad is... Just a bit late. I think we might see just the two pirates come out here. Stone Mall. Yeah. I think it's actually interesting for Robobson because uh, if he commits the Tamsin or the Soul Rend a little too early, a Headmaster Kelterzad board might be enough to uh, get in for big damage. Mm -hmm. All right. Anchorman, Presh. All right. There's Cargo Guard. Load it up. Easy tap. Got a null that's going to take care of a 4-3. Or two, four. Probably just the cargo guard. Keep the pressure up. Yep. Oh. Respecting the, the four mana. Or four, oh. uh, four, three. All right. And we're on to the last stage of the quest. I think Robobson's a little bit hesitant, but commits the flesh giant. Overlord Sarfang. Oh. How many frenzied? Uh, it's only been the one, right? The one, yeah, because he's got the other anchor man in, in hand. Right. I don't remember the other frenzied. Uh... I think that it's the anchor man, and then Crush Lord of Turtling are is the other minion that this deck runs. So I'm just not sure here that Dunde has a way to really stay alive. With no armor and at 22 and looking at a... I think that the best look might actually just be to play Crash and armor up. Mm -hmm. I think that that might be the winning line, even if it's not exactly a pretty one. Those 8-8s eight eights and that 5-2 just do not look nice across the board. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, Dundee will choose the Nizoff. Which, uh, yeah, does let him clear off the 5 2. It works okay. Yeah. 
I think I really like a like a removal spell here. Raise dead. And then we'll probably see a drain soul plus a shadow blade slinger oh, into the right. four or five. <laughs> yeah. Well, tour guide is just fine for Pretty Bobson. Good. If you look, that yeah. deck is at two cards. Yep. And he's only got one thing, one uh, health to trigger it. So. Yep. Yep. Shadow blade slinger. Bristleback. Drain Soul. And, um... Uh, Big turn. Yeah, so... I think, though, that Gunde will probably find a way to clear this board. I just don't... Don't think there's a realistic chance for much afterwards. Because here, Sarfang does get back two four sixes. And with a Coerce or Bulwark, you can stay alive for a little bit, but... It's not going to win you the game. Big think, big think for Don Day. Uh, I think your line is pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, even though this matchup is very hard, I think that uh, Donde's deck just did not really get there for him. No. And uh, I think there... Oh, see the Anethron. Not enough cards in hand, unfortunately. And Ray's Dead will... Uh... Push it over the top. Oh, oh, no! No, he can't do it. Okay, it's enough. All right. Oh, uh, well, the game froze on me. I think. No. Oh, uh, the uh, the UI lied to me a little bit. It looked like uh, there was a chance for Bobson had milled his quest, but <laughs> no, <laughs> that was not the case. And I'm gonna respectate because it's all I see is a uh, hovering, no. hovering uh, raised dead. Okay. Oh. In this case, it looks like uh, Dunde is very dead next turn, though. Uh, Robobson has put several large minions into play. We have Blightborn Tamsin, Anethron, and Flesh Giant. Dunde has 12 health, the Bulwark, and the fatigue damage is going to pile in next turn. Yep. Just with the hero power into Tamsin, into the hero power... Normally, I like to count, but in this case, I don't even think it's worth bothering. <laughs> that is... Negative count. There you go. Yeah. It looks like... It, I'll, I'll say it's 17, plus the damage on the board. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, Donde can clear the board here with Ranker plus uh, the... Plus the Shield, the shield Shatter. Okay. Chooses to hold the ranker. Poking poking the eight one. Yep, and I think that here Rebobson can put Dunde to one. Two nope, three, four, five, six. No, it's not one. It's enough. It is twenty one damage or twenty three. So there's go. the tap. Tamsin tap. And here we have three, four, five, six more coming down the pipeline. Donde gets to watch the uh, the animations go off. Yeah. Oh. Just get to watch the animations go by. Yes. Enjoy the movie. And. Well, so even though it is nearly three in the morning for Robobson, he's still playing on point. Yep. But, uh, don't they accuse this warrior deck again, uh, 
We'll have to see how Rebobson does at four in the morning. All right. Going to have to go the distance. Bebop with the big win with Warrior. Or sorry, Warlock? Gosh. Yes. I think, though, that that was uh, Rebob's best deck to beat the Warrior with if Shaman was banned. So I think Warrior probably will have a pretty easy time getting through the Druid. And I can say I'm not really familiar with the Quest Rogue matchup, but I imagine that Warrior would probably do pretty well. With sh I think Shield Shatter is a real game changer there. Yeah. Especially if it's gets discounted and you already have uh, armor on on board, so it's five and five to clear is pretty is pretty high. Yep, and if you add the two from Ranker, that's seven to yep. get through a scabs. Yeah. So I think uh, if Donde will probably just slam the warrior then, and well, that's what we see. We have to see the warrior in the quest rogue and. Well, Ricard the Valorous and Shield Chatter, I think are cards that you probably want to see. I don't know if you keep Rakara, but I think you're happy to have Shield Chatter and Cargo Guard doesn't hurt either. There's more more shield for you. Mm hmm So not a full keep. For Donde? I think Donde will probably mulligan Rakara, but I think that the other cards are pretty essential. I think looking for more tools to try to contest the early start mm -hmm. is a good idea. And uh, Rebobson is on two Foxy Fraud, so Foxy Fraud SI7 agent is does have some potential. Oh, Rakara's back. Yeah. <laughs> Throw me away, I come back. The boomerang. Job done. Right. Well, my Hearthstone is not being very nice tonight, so can't see Likewise. Rebobson's cars. Yep, I had to restart mine. But it looks like uh, Robobson's got a lot of SI7 cards and a lot of his top end. Donde finds the Ranker. Well, this just looks like an easy cargo guard. Here we go. I think Barov Ranker is just <clears throat> exactly what you want. Oh, here's probably three SIs. Nope, just two. Hmm. I think uh might have been a good idea for Robobson to use the extortion there to get one more point of stats, but just chooses to sit tight. Yep, relax and... Um, Donde, I'm sitting tight too. Gain my five armor, get my two damage. I think that just having Barov and Ranker is just such an ace in the hole. Yep. But with uh, that armor gain plus Scrap Golem plus Rakara, I'd be feeling very secure. Interesting. Just spends the Ranker right now. And uh, looks like a good secret passage from Robson. Maybe we'll see some more uh, SI cards. Here's one. There's one. Yep. Battle Master. Agent. Yep. The agent will come out. This guy's toast. Interestingly, Extortion is turned on pretty much the entire game because of all <laughs> of this armor. Yeah. <laughs> There's a Bulwark. Not called for it right now, but yeah, the scrap golem is does more than enough. Here we'll see the extortion go face. 
And what is our spy gizmo? This time it's the uh, it's the uh, noggin fog generator. Okay. Love the love the name of it. Yes. <laughs> Well, Rakara Shield Shatter is online. Takes care of what Donde sees without. Thanks. I think. Uh, I think an interesting line from Donde here is Armor Shield Shatter. Then, no matter what Robobson does, he can develop Rakara, and he has Barov Hero Power as a clear. Threatened for the rest of the game. Yeah, I think that I think that that's probably the line. And Nizoth is getting back cargo guard and a scrap golem. So Nizothing, we'll have to see if Robobson chooses to scabs before the Nizoth turn. It just right now is seeming like it is very very hard for him, and Donde is definitely in the driver's seat in my mind. Yep, hero power. Do we see the shield shatter? No, don't they Alex to hold? Holding so, on. might be trying to bait Robobson into committing more to this board. Robobson thinking this over. Gabs is two turns away. Yeah. And. We'll see an early Mr. Smite. To apply more pressure. It's more pressure now, but Rakara Shatter is just very good, and I think Donde probably has to be breathing a sigh of relief. Just knowing knowing that uh, Quest Rogue does not have access to that burst damage from Mr. Smite mm -hmm. is really big. Oh. Don't Looks think. like we're not going to see the Rokara. I think Dunder is going to try to eke as much value as he can out of his out of his normal armor button. <clears throat> it does keep him gaining life, but now the Rokara is a much bigger investment to commit. And do you think he he still should have played the last turn versus what he was facing? On the board, eh? Yeah, I think that the Rakara line was probably just a little bit better. But I guess this way, Donde does gain armor every turn as long as the scabs doesn't get developed. There also isn't a way to remove the Barov now. Okay. But. Yeah. Robobson plays around the Mutinous. Protecting an investment in scabs. There you go. Acidic Swamp Poos. An oldie but goodie. Yes. Oh. Rokara coming down this turn. I think I like Rokara here because it represents a hero power onto the Foxy Fraud. Yeah. I would actually choose not to use my weapon to clear it, and instead just hold up my hero power to threaten another gain of four armor unless Robobson commits protection to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Dundee. Pondering. Dundee yeah. will choose the attack. I know for Dundee, another consideration is probably to get value out of the immovable object before the bulwark comes down. Okay, early scabs from Robobson. I think it's probably right, though, because it has to get under and is off. Yep. <clears throat> A weapon in... Thanks to our caster vision. Oh, there's... Is it a mutinous uh, Swampoo's turn? <laughs> I, I think I like Nizoth yeah. here. Yeah. I think putting the tempo on the board, gaining more armor, and forcing... Uh, Forcing attacks out of Robobson is a good plan. Yeah, because Tower Fang's not online. Mm -hmm.
Mutinous is just... What? You know they got a minion, but the I guess the biggest minion that they would have been looking for would have been uh, Mr. Smite in, in itself, right? So. Right, Mr. Smite and Battlegrounds Battlemaster. Yeah. That's who you want. But... I think uh, Donde is getting a little greedy. I think he wants to bring back the uh, Lord of Turtling. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yum, yum. Well, he gets the best hit. He does. And we'll see if the ooze comes down. Does the ooze kill itself? Oh no. Nope. All right. So we have a uh, we have Scab Shadow Step as an option. I like that idea. Fill your hand back up. And... <clears throat> yep. So the hand is full. I think though that Robobson probably just loses if uh well, no, that's not true. There's still another SI seven informant in the deck, but if Robobson leaves the scabs on the battlefield, then it's in a hard position, but smartly shadow steps to play yep. around uh the clears. Biomatic? Oh. oh. Uh, Silas? Yeah, that's a, that's a hard pick. But yeah, Silas seems to be the correct choice. Yeah. Uh, hold on a minute. I'm, I keep on thinking it's he gets the choice to pick the card. I'm like, no, 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 hold on. Uh, He's a, He wants the next oh, card to come up. So Rancor yep. destroys his board. Yeah, I think Silas is probably correct for Robobson. And we see the Silas. Yep. So. This one's a little tough. I think uh, the Dissolve last turn would have. Uh, could have fared a little better, but. I think now it's too expensive to play. Bulwark, and, well, no bulwark would kill the five or, or weapon. So, I think using the weapon and your hero power to remove the four twos, yeah, and playing bulwark isn't isn't horrible, but uh, it's just such a such a hard turn. So much you're facing so much damage. Mm -hmm. Battlegrounds Battlemaster is a huge threat. To get three. like. Six, ten. Barov here can get you up, but the problem with Barov is that you lose it now to deal with the scabs the next time it comes down. Hmm. All right. Proactive and another shadow step. Well, wicked stab. Distractor. See both Board's these. clear. Yeah. Now here comes scabs. And a full board of stuff. <laughs> Biomatic. Oh, yep. Easy Outrider's Axe. Undercover Mule. Oh, okay. Yep, no, I, 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 I like this choice from Robobson. I think based on how Donde handled that last turn, there really can't be anything in his hand that can deal with you. Because he knows that the Silas is here, he knows that the Overlord Sarfang is here, he knows that Outrider's Axe is off the top. And there's no two cards on the left side that are in Donde's list that could cleanly answer this board. Well, outside of a Silas, taking the 9 7. Well, that still doesn't. No, still it doesn't not enough. Prevent. No, I know. Yeah, it's, he's got lethal on board, regardless of which, which way yeah. he goes. Outside. I think that the only play here is to swing the immovable object face, bulwark, and hero power. And you have to sort of give it up to uh, Battlegrounds Battlemaster. I think that's your only out. Not flashy, but... 
There just aren't a lot of options left for Dunday. Put in some work. Yep. Remember to go this way. Not that way. No. Or that way, not this way. Um, it doesn't, unfortunately for Dunde, it's just not enough. Yeah. I think uh, we can see the object go into Silas and then the bulwark. Yep. Nope. And there's Edwin. So, <clears throat> even with the scabs on the other side of the board, all Robobson needs to do is find a way to deal one damage. And that's what he's digging for. Extortion. Yep, and he's just drawing the cards. Battle Master. <laughs> so I think here, yep, we'll choose to see the stealth minions stay protected. And I'm betting we'll see a shadow step here on the Spyomatic. Go face and right. knock it all down. Yeah. Not the work chaser. down. Yep. Yep. And then the Spyomatic will come back and we will see uh we will see the Donde's fate be sealed. And uh looks like shield cam or coerce. I don't yep. think it matters at that point. And extortion will be cycled. Big turn for Robobson to ensure yeah. next turn is going to be it. All right. So I don't think that there is one, but yeah, there's no way out here for Dunde. Even Nazoth will just end up producing Cargo Guard and a, uh, and a Scrap Golem yeah. and a Mutinous. The Scrap Golem will just get uh, what's Fizzle Flash, just Fizz Flash Distracted. And then I think uh, Robobson is representing 43 damage on board with the Battlegrounds <laughs> Battlemaster. So... Yeah. Yeah. The minions are here. Four or five to get in the way, but... Yeah, I mean, it's just the Edwin and the weapon are enough. So... Here we go. We can use the fizzle distractor just to... We have to yeah. going big. That's a now. lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Double tap there. There you go. Yeah. Robobson found lethal. I think uh Robobson is playing like a man who wants to go to bed. Yeah. Big win yeah. for Robobson. I think we're gonna see the warrior again though. Third time uh, is a charm, right? And I think that uh, the uh, Beast Druid is probably the best matchup. I... Th mm. Yep, and that's what we see. Outrider's Axe is a good card to start with. Now, if I'm Robobson here, it's actually a tough call about whether I want to keep this Kazakus. It's a great it's a great card in the matchup, mm. but finding Kazakis off of Moonlit Guidance is a lot more powerful. So and, he does mulligan. And you're right. Yeah, I was just gonna say he ended up throwing it away to increase his chances to get a double a double yeah. choice out of out of Kazakis. So potential so we'll see that. choice. Heavy plate gets traded for a heavy plate. Now for those of you watching at home, uh as uh, our own ridiculous hat pointed out, the Blizzard actually made a small change in the patch to how tradable mechanics work. Mm -hmm. So the card that you traded is now actually shuffled into the deck instead of going to the bottom and then being shuffled after the draw occurs. 
So that's changed how uh, Rogue is reacted, like uh, Garot Rogue? Yes, so. exactly. So now, if you trade when there are multiple bleeds in the deck and no other cards, you are no longer guaranteed to draw all of the bleeds before you draw the tradable card. You can you can draw the tradable card any time after the first bleed. Alright. That's why people are coming in with different type of... Uh, Archetypes of, of rogue nowadays, which is better. In some I think I like opinion. them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I uh, I'm happy to see that there's more than just thief and poison. I was always a big uh, quest fan for for rogue. Mm. Yeah. So. I like it a lot too. I think it's probably one of my favorite of the quests from United and Stormwind. Yep. Agreed. All, All right. right. Donde's hand is just, you know, on on curve so far. Yeah. Got, a, got an axe, and the next turn is a golem. Yep. Unfortunately, no rancor, but the axe will uh, keep cleaning. And I think uh, we'll see Rebobson hold that moonlit guidance until at least six mana. I think Thorngrowth Century's composting just seems so powerful. Yep. And that's exactly what Robobson elects to do. Mm. I think Donde would really like to just play the Scrap Golem, but Heavy Plate Shield Shatter is a clear. I think you have to elect for the Golem here, but... There are multiple choices. I guess Heavy Plate Armor and Shield Shatter is a clear. Mm -hmm. Gain 10, wipe the board. But we'll see the Outrider's Axe first. Smart from Dunde. Bulwark of Asenoth. Yep. And we'll go with the Golem. I think that that's probably the best course. And an Ivis. Oof. I think... Uh, we do have the Wild Heart Guff here from Revobson, so we could be seeing these huge Ibis yep. turns later. Buff up the uh, Loon, maybe? Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, nope. Yeah, I don't think it's going to really matter what's, which buff is chosen. I think with the Loon, now this board is threatening enough for Donde to spend a clear. Yeah. It's just a matter of which one. All of them. There also is a greedy option here of using the Outrider's <laughs> Axe and then just going Bulwark Heavy Plate. But... Going the responsible route. Yep. Don't they'll be responsible. Take the Shield Shatter. And... Ooh. Guff. Guff is uh, Guff is a primo draw. Guff it is. And we'll probably see the hero power as well for... Uh, oh, no. Tempo. I don't think those are the best into Outrider's Axe, so I think hero power for mana might be the choice. Yep, I agree. <clears throat> and uh, I think you're at this point praying to Kazakis and Nature Studies. Oh... Uh, so unfortunate for Robobson. <laughs> Gonna walk I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a bad risk, but it's because uh, you know you have to hope at some points that the warrior doesn't have it, but unfortunately they do now. And I, I like sh like shield shatter mut mutinous is just great in the spot. Yeah. Or or even Rokara to set up a Barov clear. There it is. Shield Chatter. Rebobson was hoping he didn't have the second one. You see a little tiny smile from him. So. Yeah. Uh, and this time, uh... This time we just have the Rakara. Dunde's not messing around. Gidra. Gidra Arbor up. Lots of... Mm, well. 
And our good buddy Ash Tung is hanging out. Yes. I think now we need to see the Lord Barov. I, I don't think there's a better option. A Barov option. That Barov hero power is very nice. But now that Ivis is looking mighty secure. Yep. It's guidance time. Kazakis? Oh, every time. <laughs> Kazakis, Kazakis 10 drop. It's, it's, it's time to go for greed. There you go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Robobson didn't want to go for a second Kazakis. Yeah, because you already had one f just to get a four card in, right. in, in hand, right? So it wasn't. Yeah, he's, so that was the right. Idea. He's going to be waiting, but yeah. I think that this is just even with the card draw here. I think that's just too slow. So we, uh, wow, <laughs> you know what? I've never played Hearthstone before. Uh, look at this. But hey, yeah, I don't have any four cards in my hand now, so we're good. Yeah. God. Try it. Uh, I think there's just nothing to be done, though. Bust out of 10. Yeah. I think we'll definitely see the mutinous here. Uh, wild fine it is. Definitely don't want uh, card draw. Yeah, it's just too late in the game. Oh, he took the card draw. Interesting. Another 10 drop. Lifesteal. 4-4. Four, four. Oh, yeah. I think uh, Bobson must see a way to get through this. But I think this is going to be just a clear muteness here from Dunde. Yeah, going to grab a 10-10. A to munch on for a minute. Yeah, and uh, Bobson played around it by holding the uh, holding the matriarch. I think he got the better one out of. <laughs> he he took the draw four. Yeah. So that is the wind out of the sails, and probably a tempo bulwark. Oh, just a hero power. And this does set up lethal. Or, no, one off. Not quite there. Guidance. Nope. Oracle of a Loon. I think that's the best you got. Mm. I don't love that. I think you need to hold back the Ivis for the second Oracle, but... Trap Golem. Well, well the first, like a, well, first almost... time, I think, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. Dunday can clear two minions. Let's... I think that the Anchor Man is always the place to start. Probably see an Ivis and one Matriarch go go away. For Silas, there we go. Oh, there's Silas. Silas could get that ten ten taunt. And the bulwark there is mighty handy. Mm-hmm. So, looking now, I think Robobson gets a great value trade into uh, into this mutinous right now with the Ivis. Good nurture. Little love tap on the fourteen nine. Yep. Yeah. Six Swampoos. Not going to do much here. Now, unfortunately, Dante has no removal. I think with Nizoth, he can get back a few minions. 
probably wants to put the crash into play if possible. But <laughs> very difficult turn. Bobson finding that Kazakis off the top was a big game changer. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of uh, Scrapyard Golem. Stone Day still does have the Bulwark to block a little bit more damage. Mm -hmm. I think that 10 10 taunt is. Yep. Oh, and then remove the 4 2. Yeah. And that Arbor Up will look pretty juicy in a second. But we'll yeah. see what's in the Nature Studies. <laughs> oh, Pride's Fury. Pride's Furies, yeah. Quick pick. Yep. Or does he want uh, more 2 2s and then they have enough mana for it? Or uh, Arbor up after that? Well, he does. He still has 14 mana, I think. Yeah, so he'll do it with the Runic Carving Arbor up play. So lose a little bit of value on the Arbor up, but clear off the 10 10 with uh, three of these uh, rushers. Uh, looks like a. <laughs> Interesting. All right, Bob says get the order down, and Donde is back on the ropes. Overlord Sarfang though is uh, yeah, he's hit a couple. Just actually, just <clears throat> one. The oh, other, the other frenzy minion went over to the other side with Silas. All oh, right. Right. So. Mm. And what other cards has Ray Bobson got in his hand? Um, didn't see kennels come out. So maybe one or two kennels. Don't There's still an arbor up as well. See the Sarfang, we get back one. Draw a card. <clears throat> oh, a Shield Slam is just absolutely what you need. That is, uh, that is excellent. Clear off the Ivis and a tree. I'm gonna clear off this 10-5. Uh, Right. And there's the kennels. Yep. But and there's the arbor up. And there's one left. Which uh looking at looking at what I've seen is probably a druid of the reef. And the heavy plate might be enough. Uh, that ten nine loon is just not a not a happy feeling, is it? <laughs> no. Uh, Nizoth though uh, could clear it. I just think that it's difficult for Donde to find a clear and stay alive. Ranker. Uh, yeah. Oh. I don't know if that solves the problem. Maybe he's planning a Nizoth anyway. See what happens. <laughs> Absolutely. I think Nizoth is really the only play, and you need to hope for the Scrapyard Golem and the Rushing Pirate. And... It is not the rushing pirate, so there's no way to clear the 10 9. Oh. And I think that is. Well, it's tough. So the druid and the wolf go into that. 
And that'll that'll do it, yeah. yeah. Lethal, yeah. Not enough. <clears throat> There it is. Bob, so oh. the big, the big win. Yep, Puts and his team uh, back in action. Control warrior gets sent packing. Hurts my soul a little bit. <laughs> uh, good games though from both of our players. Tough outcome for Donde, but. You know, if you get to play three games of Control Warrior on the big stage, you can't exactly go home sad. Cool. All right, so we got um, we got Rebobson going to join us here in a sec. Oh boy! <laughs> Oof. Three wins and a post game. That is that's commitment. Rebobson to join us here. Good morning, sir. Congrats on your 3-0 win. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Nice. That's excellent. Well played games. It was a blast watching. You can you could kind of see my um, ability to concentrate sort of decrease oh. the match went on. <laughs> you were concentrating just fine out there. It seemed like a big part of Donde's strategy was uh, keeping you up as long as he could. I can't hear. Come on. Hold on. Yeah, no worries. <clears throat> yeah, big big win for your team if you're on voice again. Let's test one, two. Well, maybe you got to kill your cams. All right, Bob's is just going through uh, some audio issues, so that'll just uh, bring the score up to date here for um, F2L is up uh, six six to uh, to four um, with that uh, Rebobson win over Don Day tonight. So his record improves to four and two, with Don Day's going to to three and two. So Coming up tomorrow, we're having a wild tournament, I believe, uh, which is being run by the THL for uh, with uh, Neji, not Neji, but uh, NHL uh, NHL fan, um, aka Marty Marty B. Um, we're gonna have some casters, I believe. Super Chicken is gonna be joining us as well as content. Might be fish. I can't hundred percent be sure, but and on the EU region too, right? So that's going to be starting at one o'clock Eastern for for everybody out there. Rebob, can you hear us, buddy? All right. Going through some audio issues real quick. Um, any any bigger portions of uh, the, the night there with um, what you what you saw tonight out of the two matches there, Dankstead? Favorite favorite um, moment? I think uh, for me it was probably seeing Neji's Control Warrior get through Wild Nines Hunter. That just that really stood out. Okay. it's. Always fun in Hearthstone when you see a match that looks really one-sided just completely go the other way. And, you know, I think that Headmaster Kel'Thuzad is a card I like, and it was cool to see it do something impressive. Yeah. <laughs> right. Still checking with Rebob to make sure he got some audio issues fixed or not. His video is working, so maybe it's... looking around. You can see him on screen, so you know he's trying to work at all kinds of uh, 
screen actions going. <laughs> uh, Sunday night, so I'll touch base on that. So Sunday night we have a Sunday showdown, um, possibly with Dollar Bills and Myanodon. We'll be broadcasting two matches that evening, um, starting at 8 o'clock. I just got to find Put it. Uh, okay, so we got 8 o'clock is uh, – we don't have a, a, a – match. Hey, there, there we go. How you doing, Rebecca? Back. Oh, God. Hey, guys. Hey, it's, it's, Sorry only, about it's that. what, 3 o'clock in the morning for you right now? Half oh, three, if you want to be really precise. <laughs> yeah, no, my friends apparently stopped working, so, so that's cool. Um, well, congrats again on the, on the win, buddy. Thank you. That was um, – it was a weird one. You could, I think you could kind of see my my ability to concentrate <laughs> decreased as the match went on. You, you seem oh, to be okay, doing okay. fine. Yeah, you seem. Yeah, to be you doing looked good fine. to us. Yeah. Game, game one, I played about pretty played about played around pretty much everything. Yeah. Game two, I think you saw my cam where I realized I just gave him Silas and then put my scabs on the right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I realized just after I ended the turn that that was really dumb. Um, but it didn't punish you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, at the end of the day, it was still seven mana to just not really do anything. So. Yeah. And I think as long as you kept your spiomatic there, it was looking good. Yeah, that spiomatic carried, carried that game. It was beautiful. And then the last game, I just don't really know what the hell happened for most of that game. It was mm. it was weird. Yeah. But, yeah. We we were uh, we were commenting on yeah. on Kazakas here, your Kazakas that came off of that uh, the I want to call it guidance, but I'm, I can't think yep, of the word. Yep, movement right now. guidance. That's the yeah. one. Guidance. guidance is the shallow one. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't fall for the. I came so close to um, playing the the first one yeah. for nothing. Well, <laughs> I fell for it too. I thought you were going to need to draw it with how dire the situation was but you just found it next card you were you were ready to go <laughs> uh, that, like I, I thought that one was going quite badly but um mm -hmm. turns out control warrior without any removal in it is 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 not so great at removing stuff <laughs> yeah i think uh for john day only having uh five remove or I guess seven removal spells in the deck was just not enough with the uh, Headmaster Kel'Thuzad. He just never found a way to work it in. Yeah, if, if I was playing the list, which, like, didn't run Guff and Ivus and Kazakus and Gidra, which is, like, a bit greedier, mm -hmm. the fact that he had both Shatters quite early on would probably have got him there. Mm -hmm. But I was just... I knew what the game plan was. It was to draw the entire deck and then Oracle. Like, I, I, I was intending to go for a much bigger Oracle Ivus matriarch, but, you know, that, that mutinous kind of kind of fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> but at least at least to pick that, uh, we, we saw that four-card uh, four draw 10-10 ten, ten there, and that was your deck yeah. was, I think, at six, six cards at that time, so... In a weird way, I think hitting the 10 drop might have been the best yeah, thing yeah. for my hand. I really didn't want to lose the Oracle, and yeah. I didn't really want to lose Ivus. Yeah. Um, or, or the Matriarch. The, and I'd much rather he, he get the draw four rather than the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was pretty annoyed. Didn't get, didn't get Divine Shield, didn't get copy of his minion on either 10 drops. Mm-hmm. I think the 4-4 four, four of stats, though, was turned out to yeah. be plenty. Yeah, considering it's in Barov and both Shatters, I was just like, I can just make my stuff as big as possible, yeah. and I will <laughs> probably win. Yeah. It turned out to have a thick turn there, so it caused a lot of damage going forward. So Is that me 6-0 today? Feel there right. you go. Congrats, Not buddy. hero, but it's another sweep. I'm going to get player of the week one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> you get a bribe oh. Dr. Bombed, I think, right? So. Refuse to bribe. I'm just going to keep sweeping. <laughs> uh, 
Well, if you can sweep somebody at three in the morning, you know, I don't know what else you can do to get player of the week. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, that Dundo was talking some smack before the game, so it was good to put him in his place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, he exited real quick, and that was that. So, any uh, yeah. any, any final words before we uh, let, allow you to get some sleep, buddy? Uh, no, um, just shout out to the F2Ls, and hopefully they all win. I know Anthel's playing right now, so. Oh, okay. Okay. He uh, hope he wins. There you go. All right. And obviously, um, I'll be casting on Salty Saturday tomorrow. Nice. So, With uh, Wild Nine and and um, who who's your casting partner? It. Fish is a world known often and fish casting, then turtles doing the last two games. I'm doing the first two games. Okay, we got yeah. a big night on uh, on Saturday night. I didn't see if there was four games on there. Yeah, it's going to be a big one as well as the the, the EU tournament, right? Yes, yeah. so, so that's being. I'm going to be off of that and then uh, with Neji, not Neji, gosh. Uh, Marty B and Super Chicken what? and trying to think who else is casting. With any luck, you'll be casting me again there. There you go. Oh, you're you're jumping in there too, are you? Cool. I mean, I, I finally get to play on my actual server. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good thing. So. Um, All right. Seeing as we're not getting that World Series back anytime soon. So, yeah, I'll see you there, Saku. All right, perfect. Well, good luck in the tournament, buddy, and and good luck with some some sleep and some rest. Yes, sleep is sleep is necessary. (laughs) Ciao. Get that well earned rest, Robson. Thanks for coming on. Take take care. Wow, what a great night. Wow. Yeah, got to see lots of Warrior. Makes makes me happy. Warrior is back, folks. And NJO would be super happy. Um, I know he's in chat there a couple times. So he's yeah. our resident uh, Warrior class fan, uh, along with uh, C-Mac. C-Mac was a big fan of uh, Warrior as well, especially Control Warrior. So, yeah, that pretty much wraps us up uh, for the evening. So, again, tune in tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern to check out the uh, EU tournament, uh, Wild Tournament. So well, should be pretty fun with the uh, with the crew that we got going on. So, on behalf of Dankus Dad, I'm Saku. Have a great night, everybody. Be safe out there. Have a good evening. Thanks for watching. <laughs>